Hey guys, this is a live recorded match. Um, we are playing against Cam Tucky on Himayama. Um, he's playing the Byzantines. And um, yeah, it's a live cast, and then we'll probably do a um, just a normal cast after this. And it's been a while since I've played my Mongols. So let's see, we'll set up over here. Set this up over here. These guys here. And when you finish, come over here. Is there a sheep over here? There was a sheep. Sheep out of here. Oh, that's a mistake. Okay, luckily he didn't grab those guys from us. He could have. And we're gonna have a pretty good um, ability to scout now. He's gonna scout the whole other side of the map, other side, but we should be able to scout this whole southern side and around his base and back um, because of the of the scouting pattern that she took, and then because we left four sheep off the off that here. Um, so I've been on vacation and work down in Peru. Um, I have a project down there, and the internet connection was really, really hit and miss. Even though I like got a new router and a little bit better internet connection, it's just it always was around like a hundred seconds, milliseconds of ping, and just made it tough to play. Um, on top of that, I have been playing a lot of Byzantines, strictly Byzantines, on uh, uh, learning how to play, kind of like a normal game, I guess you would say. And um, besides just playing with like Byzantines, which um, is very interesting with how flexible the Civ is. He's only got two sheep, so he's got a funky pattern. He's coming around to where. Um, we've heard the deer move, so he's coming around to where we've already been, so it's gonna be really bad for him. Um, and we've been playing mostly Byzantines, like I was saying. Um, I do like the Civ quite a lot. Uh, I think it's a really strong Civ. I also think Mongols is really strong Civ. I think they're both um, probably A tier Civs at this point. Um, but that being said, I do want to play more Mongols at this point. We haven't got back and up to conquer. He's gone from Limitan, I believe. That's interesting. So this might be because um, uh, he's uh, wanting to like deny this Ubu early and like an early dock play. Byzantines have a really strong um, denial on early docks, and since this is in Mayana, it's very um, customary for people to open with um, a dock. So that's probably part of it why he uh, is doing the opening that he is. But that's okay, it's actually working, uh, I think, in our favor here. We'll just go into Mangadai. Um, one big thing um, is I don't know how well, I mean, like, Mangadai obviously kind of shitty in terms of DPS in general, but against the Limitani with their um, shield wall, it's going to be really, really bad probably, so we're going to see how well this works out in our favor here. Ooh, I need to go back one more OG food. Messed up my build here a little bit, but that's okay. Um, we don't have to rush. We're going to build this and then we're going to rush a range behind this. But we don't have to um, worry about getting a stable up right now. Um, because um, I'll go back over here actually. I 
Bomb ship, bomb ship feels really nice. We are gonna see if he is on water here. I don't think he is. No, he isn't. Okay, at least we're getting that up. Let's go harass after this. Come over here. Let's get this over here. He's gonna head back. We gotta build, move this archery range. Stone, he isn't mining stone, not a second TC, which is nice. Um, get back on the wood here, please. 11 on food, that's plenty. Oh, I want to get a couple more on to wood here. Hippodrome. And he's going for second TC. So that's cool, we're fine with this. The plus side is um, he's super slow with his um, his limitane, so like the micro's relatively easy. Um, go back under here. We need to kill these villages on berries. Yeah, the one time I soak up just damage, it's crazy. The grid go up and around over here. Um, and we'll come around here. Oops, get this going. I get this going. Okay, nice we didn't get caught out here. A little bit bad. We are gonna take these couple of guys. We're gonna go raid this other side. He's got it enough for a second TC. Let's drop our scout arrow here. Please, there we go. Okay, we're okay there. 
Okay, a couple of villager kills here is really nice. Okay, we do have to take some damage here, unfortunately. But we will be able to do some good damage over here. Let's go back over here. Um, unfortunately, in the habit of making archers, um, let's come over here. Let's drop a tower. Let's drop a tower right here. Um, and then he's going second TC, so we're gonna drop a second TC. And then when you finish, we'll build this. Let's get this moving over here. Let's come over here. It's a bad move. Um, let's get this market. We need this market hotkeyed. Let's go shift 9. Okay, let's come back over here. TC is going up. But again, not end of the world here. We're just going to trade into this army. Okay, now let's just back up. Um, you guys could do this. Let's get this going. Um, let's come over here. He might be going for a castle edge behind this. I need one of these villagers. We gotta build more infrastructure in general. We're gonna need a lot of Mangadai since Mangadai, only Mangadai really requires a lot of Mangadai. Um, a lot more than normal. You could build with just archers. I do have an Ubu depleted. Let's just build this up here. Let's come over here. Get that going. Move this up here. Uh, let's get another stable up. Okay, he's walled this off. He's going really turtly, which is okay. Let's try to raid over here. Get 
Go to the front of the base. I don't want him to think we are um, trading or dropping that tower on his second goal. I don't think he sees it yet, which is nice for us. It's a big mistake on his part. Like it's gonna be fairly easy to spot. So he has spotted it. Okay. We we'll just cancel this. Six, six here. Five under here. Get this just in case. Get a couple more traders. Run up the five traders, and we might as well build a tower back here. There is nothing going on on these spear yet. And you guys will be the last of my group over here. We got a bunch of wall in the back here. Let's get a couple more ranges up. Okay, I want to go to castle behind this now. Punch a wall here. Or punch a hole in the wall here, rather. Okay, we just double produce. Okay, wall being microed. Not micro, but being built, so we might as well try to deal with that. It's gonna be annoying to deal with that noise constantly. Um, when you finish this, come over here, come over here. Let's get this some burn down here. Ooh, mistake here. Um, I want to get a siege workshop the minute we age up. Um, I might as well get another tower here as well. Get this upgrade. Get this army all messed up. Get the Colonel Tai over here. I don't know if that's worth at this point, this tower here, but it's probably good for security. Okay, we're gonna take this army. He's building houses up here. We might be able no we can't deny this, he's got the fast production speed. I forgot about that. Let's get that going. Let's get this going. Let's get this. A bunch of this. Okay, we can punch a hole in this now, which is gonna be really nice. It's gonna give us some tempo. Okay, 
this get some monks out get this raid in these guys are killing here that's fine let's kill this there we go back here uh, it's pretty much GG at this point I mean we'll we'll slow ball it here but I feel like it's GG um, so some of some resources here get these going Come over here okay it just fall back out of here Finish, you come back. Just make a lot of horsemen here. We need to get more um, stables up. Oh shit. That's not good. Get this over here. Get this back here. Fall back. seem to be on his side. Food spawn. Let's see what his food spawn was. Uh, 
I don't know what a spoon fence was. Four bears. Ah, the deers. Yeah. Weird. Both are deers. Super forward. Um, and we never transitioned into deals. So we played this actually not very good. In the sense that um, once you start running out of sheep, instead of doing only the doing only the pastures, which we did plenty of, right? We got twenty six here. We could have like on your starting guys. Um, yeah, and then you know, typically our food um we could have grabbed these these deer we could have grabbed these deer and like he says they're pretty much mid map they're not like in a good spot um also going 2 tc against mongols is a really bad idea you too good luck but um when we get up the traders 18 a little bit slow there so not the not the cleanest of games. Um, but yeah, that the spearman opener is really weird. Um, it typically isn't done unless you're denying um, water. And Byzantines have a really strong water denial build. Um, actually, I can show you guys after this uh, a game that I just had. That was that. Um, but against Mongols are typically spear uh, tower rushing. Um, like his typical Mongol opponent is gonna have a tower rush like a barracks up, and I would just outscale kill all of his Limitane. Um because his build order I doubt was very clean. So anywho. Um one second, let's see. So we're up to D3. I've been playing only Byzantines basically, and it's it dropped me down to the pits of like gold three, basically. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's fun playing him and learning how to play him that way. And I'm gonna enjoy being able to show you guys two different styles of play. Not only my Mongols, um, but I'm also gonna show you guys Byzantines, which is more of a standard um, form of play. And it's gonna be cool to be able to show you guys kind of like a different way that. Um, a more standard way of playing and give you guys a little bit more rounded um, advice um, when needed and showing examples. So uh, this is against Eastport something. He's playing Order of the Dragon. This is on Boulder Bay. The standard opening on Boulder Bay is um, hybrid, so dock opener. As you can see, he's sending a scout and here's a villager. So what I do is I take my initial six fills, go to a straggler tree, Pull one veil to go to barracks, then a cistern, and then onto deer. And then I pull one more veil to start gathering deer immediately, and I rally onto uh, sheep. The first drop off of wood, um, one of those villagers will drop off 10 and then gather sheep. The second drop off of wood, two of these villagers will drop off and then we'll build the house. If you don't build the house, you will get housed. So you see, just, just barely in time, um, we're gonna get that house up and um, that's pretty important because you have a spearman coming up with your villager and it will slow you down. And the faster this first villager, this first spearman is out, the faster you're starting to burn down this dock, which is really important to get pressure out um, on the map. Um, behind this, we're scouting. We scout always straight to the middle on Boulder Bay. You see where the water is and then from there find the sacred site and go to the corner. Try to take their side if you can. It kind of depends if you find their scout or not. We do miss the sheep, a little bit of a mistake. And if we look at his scouting pattern, he went straight to water and back. And now he's scouting the middle. So he's losing all of the sheep that were basically in the middle on our side. And then he is going to start getting hit by us now. He does notice before um, we start hitting. So nice reaction by him. Nice reaction time and he's playing uh, good attention. So we are causing some idle time now, which is again little details that add up and kind of push off the your typical build orders. And let's see. Um, 
we're just rallying spearmen over. Once we get up to nine on food, um, I like to rally one more villager onto wood and to go up to four. And then from here, I'm usually sending a vill one villager over to go build the dock. And that's what's happening now. And why you build the dock is so that you can scale um, comparatively behind this. Um, he is got one fishing boat out. Now he's decided to react to the with the barracks, and this is what some players will do. They'll cut the ship production, but they already have one ship out, so their eco is already pulling ahead of yours. So it's important that you drop another dock because sometimes they'll just drop another dock. And if you don't have a good answer to this, um, with your own eco booming, you're just going to get eventually outscaled. After this, one villager sent out. We're going to send one more villager on to sheep. You really want to be up to 11 on sheep. And we're just um, rallying more villagers onto wood after this. This I stop at 10 because this villager is going to build a dock and he's going to become the 11th villager to help with the Limitane production. Um, we have five Limitanes out. Um, a little bit of Miss Micro here. We're attacking his fishing boat and he's got his Gilded Spearman out. At 160 health, 10 damage. We have 90 health, 7 damage. So. Um, he kills us in 9 hits, and we kill him in... That's a good question. I don't know. In 20 hits? Yeah. So we gotta be careful about this micro. We do try to snipe the scout so he loses vision. Um, overall, he does a better job of microing this than we do this early fight. And we are just trying to bur get the burn on the dock. It doesn't have to be the complete burn down. We just want it to catch on fire. Kenny's doing a good job of pulling back his spearmen and contesting here. Behind this, we're rotating on to this wood line. We do need to drop a lumber camp. There we go. And we have 11 on food here with this dock. And he's just producing from one barrack constantly. And this dock is on fire now. And his one villager ship that he had producing in front of us is now basically wasted investment for him and gone. Meanwhile, we have our dock up and we aren't starting to produce from here, which we should start doing. Um, I want to start rallying villagers onto gold here because we have to look into an age of timing that's decent here. He's going to commit into pushing us off with Gilded Spearmen, so we have to be careful. And we try to take this fight and micro this fight again. Not the best micro on our part. Uh, we should be pulling back our injured ones. He does a good job of pulling back his injured spearman. We take like four or five free hits there. It's a lot of damage. It's half of your one spearman life. But we have better numbers here, so we can kind of hold here. Behind us, our first dock is producing its first ship. And um, unfortunate, we're kind of long rallying here. And we should have enough for the next cistern, so we are dropping the cistern now as well. So really important to get that cistern up as Byzantines. I don't think it's worth really going for a passive stone cistern. Um, or like mining stone in dark age unless you have your 100% your opponent 100 sure your, your matchup and your opponent is going to be a boom play. This is a bad fight for us. Seven regular Lemitane against five Gilded Spearmen. And he's done a really good job of microing behind this. He's got a lot of weak Spearmen, but we're not getting good hits on here. We're trying to micro it and we clean up uh, three of them. But you can see that it's a uh, Overall, he's doing a better job micro than this. So now he's turned the tables in terms of military count, and we've got to fall back. And behind this, you can see he's dropped another dock. And this is what I mean by um, having to build a dock of your own, because now he's got a dock up, but we've also got a dock, and we've got two boats up. So behind this, um, our cistern is up. We're building a tower here, so he can't push us off of our gold and push into our base really with the spearmen we'll be able to stop any aggression here um, we're able to micro a little bit here kind of turn the tables and um, the big thing is we have a second barracks out now and we know with um, Order the Dragon the units are very expensive so he's going to be on one barracks so behind this we're going to be on two barracks and we're going to start um, accelerating our our, our military numbers here, and that's really what you just have to do against Order of the Dragon is just outmass them. So we've got our units here. He's gonna start burning down our dock, but we're not too worried. Again, 
tables have turned down. Now he's got a time to burn this down before um, we can um, before we can stop him. We do find this next dock, and we are starting to run it down with a scout. But it's going to take like five minutes to do it, so it's just there to kind of harass, you know, just force him to react. And we're just getting vision of his fishing boats in this regard, so he's on four, and we keep producing fishing boats here to match. We harass a little bit, pull off a little bit of aggro, and we're starting to get a good amount of numbers here. Um, we got plenty of gold, and we, I think we've gotten our upgrade yet. No, we haven't gotten our forestry upgrade yet. We should probably get that, and we should probably look at getting our wheelbarrow at this point as well. Um, but we do push him off of the dock now, and he's going to start gathering for his feudal age. Um, since he gets his, he's got his dock up, and he's gathering for feudal age, he's going to basically be able to secure this dock going up. Um, He's got six gilded spearmen, and we've got eight regulars. It's again a rough fight, um, probably not in our favor. Um, and but we're going to try to kind of pseudo take this fight and do what we can here. You decide to drop a tower. I'm not sure if I cancel this tower or not, but um, just to help us hold this position better. Um, we pull out gold wheels to do this because we have a lot of gold and we didn't need to be floating gold anymore. We should get our forestry upgrade here shortly as well as our wheelbarrow. Those are two big eco upgrades that would really help us um, out right now. So, um, 10 spearmen against, uh, what is this, 7 gilded spearmen, but there's a bunch that are weak health. So, um, this is again where you kind of shine against Order of the Dragon is you just have to outmass, especially going double barracks now, you can keep ahead of this. He's tapping up with Minor Palace. We figured he was going to be ready for um, a Feudal Age timing because his, uh, his spear mass um, died off, he stopped making so many. So we're, uh, we're expecting that to happen and we're trying to cut um, spear production. But we do are still we still have a mass up because we know he's got this mass of like six spears, right? Or like we thought it was like five. So we know that there's a mass that we have to deal with, we have to be careful. We are sending a scout over to go scout his base. It is gonna get in time, I believe. And we're gonna push across and just kinda of try to engage in a fight. We've been double producing. We're gonna been saving up for our age up now. Um, we did get our upgrades a little bit late. But um, the idea is to kind of see what's happening here. We do see a dock. And we probably should just push this, um, to be true, honest. He's got 8 against 15. We win that fight handily. And um, yeah, dock is cranking out units. And uh, he's going to be looking to build ships up. One big thing is their ships are just normal. There's no real special things. Um, I guess the only thing is they've got fire stations. Um, Guild and Caress for men-at-arms. Okay, our wheelbarrow's coming up and we're tapping up with our Grand Winery now. So we pull a bunch of villagers to tap up at a, uh, a fairly decent time. And we got a lot of wood banked up. And um, we're gonna jump another dock in the top. We really want to make sure we win this water battle, um, especially since he's got the age up timing advantage on us. We have to be careful that um, we we lose this. So I probably should have pulled three of these uh, ships down to here. It's a little bit of a mistake on my part, and we're playing really passive with our spearmen because I don't want to start burning down and force like a demo ship to explode on us. And this is that demo ship that we're talking about. A little bit worried. Um, another dog coming up behind this. He's still just on one racks. So, and his eco in general, we're both using up a lot of our resources. We're not like floating a lot. A little bit of a mistake here. Um, not much we can do here. We lose a couple of fishing boats, unfortunately. Um, but now that we're aging up, or now that we've aged up, we're getting our upgrade for our hardened limitane, double broad axe, as well as um, arrow slits on this first dock. I probably should have got arrow slits here first. And then um, our first uh, galley is coming out here as well. Behind this, our base, we're still sitting on T C2, Cistern 2. Um, probably not to drop another lumber camp here would be good. Uh, but we're definitely ahead here in Eco. He wastes his demo ship on us. And um, we see that he's got his Hulk out. So we're gonna build. We have two 
um, get a dock or a, a demo ship out. We are building galleys from this backside just to help turn this fight, and we just gotta keep running these ships back. Our galleys focusing on his galleys. Uh, we're not too worried about trading here um, because we have a demo ship here, so he's forced to, to react here. And almost kills it. Don't get the full secure, unfortunately. And um, again, we're still st we're still trying to secure water. So the big thing is focusing on this. But we have a lot of ships here. Oh, and I totally I think we missed the maybe we didn't miss the demo fight. Anywho, this men and arm is out, and this men at arms is the bane of any unit you can make basically in Feudal Age right now, so it's really strong. Um, we see this and we're going to pull a demo ship where we push here and just pull his units as close as we can to the shore. Get a really nice blow up and we take out half his life of his early uh, gilded men at arms. It's a really big swing in terms of, of what just happened in the game. He loses all of his land military and um, basically now is... is um, Losing on water as well. He's got um, a Hulk out, and he's gonna be able to deal with our um, our galleys effect effectively. Sorry about that. Um, Alright. Um, sorry about that again. Um, so. Since he's got nothing on land anymore, he's looking for an Aegep to try to turn just with unit quality and fight. But he's gonna lose water behind this. And he's got a couple of Hulks, but the good thing about Hulks is it's really easy to deal with them with demos producing um, the fastest of any of the ships as well. So it's almost kind of a trap to go Hulk because demos um, spawn so quickly. A little bit of a mistake um, on my part, uh, grabbing this demo ship and not sending it over. Almost do it again. Alright, we're able to clean up this one. We're going to take our army and clean up this dock. Let's just burn it down the other one. Yeah, we're just worried about demo ships coming out. Um, this way we're really cow cat and mousey with our military units on land. Let me spot this one villager. Um, he does spot us here, but we're paying attention, so we're able to get out. Um, he probably could have exploded there, but... Again, we've got our galley out. We're going to get our drillman out. Behind this, we are getting another um, fishing ship going. And basically, at this point, it's, it. it's over. Um, his one, I guess, hope is that he's in castle, and he's going to be able to get a bunch of relics out. And yeah, that's about it. Stroman is an interesting ship. Um, I do think it's just inferior to Hulk's. Um, it's bigger, it's clunky. Um, there's something I'm probably missing out in terms of its effectiveness. Maybe it's just really good when it's super massed when there's a lot of them. Um, but overall, I feel like it's just not as good. Um, but we do completely clean them off of land, and we have two more drones here. So we're going to uh, set this dock on fire really quickly. And behind this, he's got his Guild of Men at Arms coming out. We are starting to burn down at the top here. Um, just trying to find a way in the back of his base. Behind this, we are up to two tier 3 cisterns. And we're going to look to go to Castle uh, as well. It's just not worth um, fighting. Uh, or the dragon in general, without crossbows in feudal age, even worse so in castle. We're gonna drop down preemptively to the archery ranges so we can switch to crossbows early. And older horn tower is gonna be your choice as uh, Byzantines for your castle age landmark. Probably like I don't know, ninety percent of the times. And we are dropping a mercenary house. We have like, a lot of rails stored up here. So that's kind of a mistake on our part, not having this out sooner, because uh, we could have had Keshex raiding um, a lot sooner. Or had like a longbow mass building up. So he's, uh, 
got this outpost going up. We're able to turn it down and uh, do some damage on these villagers here. Every villager kill is a pretty big deal for um, Order of the Dragon. And his guild of men at arms, he should just fight this. Um, I'm kind of surprised he doesn't. I mean, he definitely should have just turned and fight this, but here's his uh, three men at arms against 14 spearmen, and it's 100% I lose this. And a little bit unattentive by my part. We'll do this fight go down. We're getting our upgrade. Uh, we haven't gotten border settlements yet, which is kind of a big mistake as well. So we're just getting it now. And again, three men at arms are able to clear this all up completely. Sorry about that guys, um, makes like the third pause now. Um, so, forget to kind of overestimate the power of these men at arms, or underestimate the power of the men at arms and have to fall back here. But we do have crossbows starting to trickle in here. Even with a couple of crossbows it's really going to help to be able to hold this. And um, our macro is now in a really good spot. Plenty of infrastructure going up. Um, behind this, we're going to send a transport ship over. On this map, if you do get water control, do try to get a dock over on this island. These fish are inefficient, really, for you to be picking up from your regular docks. So you really want a dock over here. Um, behind this, we're able to push him, push forward, push him back. And he's really struggling for food because he's been rotating. For um, well, he got pushed off of uh, off of water more than anything. Where where he was investing for, so um, we got a lot of Keshix. Um, I guess one mistake here is we do forget to get our veteran contract out, and this is full up with the conscripto. We're um, full with this because we had so much olive oil floating. So a little bit of a mistake again on our part. And um, I'm a little bit curious about why he's taking this far goal. I guess it's just better in the long run for him to take this gold if he's able to survive. Um, but uh, it's definitely a, a risky play. So we do send a villager over here. Decide to take, grab a dock here, set this up. And. Um, I think we do build a monastery here eventually, it's something we do definitely need. We're going up to sister number four. And yeah, at this point it's just basically over. There's no real chance for him to come back here. Um, we were a little bit late on getting our blacksmith out, but we are finally getting it and we're getting our siege engineering out. This um, sister, I really need to switch over to dialectus. It's kind of a mistake on my part not doing so. We're just rallying more troops, plenty of crossbows. Our scout uh, gets spotted over here, picking out the boar. And we have a lot of Kashyyyks over here. So we do notice this um, villagers finally. We're able to clean this up with our eight um, Kashyyyks. Again, really big um, pickup, but he has almost mined out half of this goal. He's going to come to try to wall this. And uh, he has a uh, land snakes over here, which are those land snakes just do so much damage. You can see what they are. they just absolutely shred the the Keshik, and that's why we fall back here. I, I didn't see spearmen. I thought it was just men at arms, and the guild of land snakes are kind of hard to tell at the land snakes. And uh, yeah, he's able to wipe that really easily. Behind this, we've got tons of the Matane, a bunch of crossbows being made. Infrastructure, infrastructure set up. We're rotating villagers onto gold here, and we are sending a monk over to the sacred site. And we're just focused on burning stuff down um, with uh, the regnets down, so he doesn't get his bonuses as much um, as much gold. Because we figured it's going to be gold. So I think he must have forgot that he had this gold in the back. Um, but we're able to burn this down and we're going to focus on burning down this tower next. Um, and the food, but I think he's going to tap out behind this 
if I remember correctly. We just have a, a little stream of units coming across at this point. And, um, nice next to absolute work here. You can see I just decimate my units there. Um, but the big thing is we got a really big mass of uh, crossbows behind this. And he's just going to tap out because he knows that he's just going to delaying the inevitable behind this. We also had a bunch of Kajaks that were going to start hitting the back of his base. So, um, yeah, that was good. That's kind of how you do a proper um, build for a Dark Age hybrid um, water denial. You kind of have to rush that barracks out as soon as possible and go from there. Um, and then... I guess this one's a fast one. We'll do one more match. Uh, this is against Eric Fardman. He's playing as Japanese on Himayama. And uh, yeah, this is a, an interesting matchup because typically they're going to, like, it's Himayama, so there's a lot of players that will go for the hybrid, especially as Japanese. And so what I've decided to do is do. Like, it's just a standard build, but I send my scout directly to the middle, and I really want to scout this water really good um, to see if he goes for water. If he goes for water, I want to just transition into a barracks and go from there, and I should be fine. The only issue is, like, it just comes out really delayed because I don't have the, the right stuff, but I can cancel this, this mining camp. I can leave the house, I cancel the mining camp, drop a lumber camp here, and go from there. It's a little bit delayed, but uh, overall it's fine. So we scouted this, and he scouted. He's got. He's running straight across on his side, and we decide after doing this, we're going to cut down, um, just in case if he did scout over and across, there's a chance that we're getting a cutoff rod here, and this is what is happening um, at this time. If we look at our vision, we're just going to spot these sheep here. So I know he hasn't come here. So if he is on the cutoff route, he should be over here somewhere at this point. And yeah, you can see he's actually a little bit further than what I actually thought he would be at. But we're able to pick up a four sheep here from his side. And we see he's over here, so we know that he ran this way and over. So we're going to assume that he's going to run straight back to his base and go for a cutoff. Um, if we look at where he's rallied to though... Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I think he's going to run back and finish his side and finish scouting there. So since he doesn't go for a um, a early dock, especially some, that's something that a lot of Japanese players would do. So I'd say I typically go for like a dark age barracks opener, but since he doesn't, um, we decide to just go standard age up, and then we're gonna go into hippodrome and early harass. Um, because typically a lot of Japanese players are going to go either fast castle, they're going to go 2TC. Very few of them actually stay in feudal and want to duke it out. So um, we're going to try to punish that creed the best that we can. He's run to his base and he's scouting around the backside. And we're doing another cutoff route over here. We're trying to get as many sheep from his side that we can. There really wasn't many sheep to be had over here. Um, they're really, on his side in general, on this top side, there really wasn't that many. So I got one, two. So, I do I happen to take these two sheep from over here, or these one sheep. But, um, yeah, we're just going to head across and try to cut over. And if we look at our vision, we run into his scout. And so at this point, um, we know we have to, um, cut him off. We try to get over here, we see that this is, um, forested off, so we take a wider okay. angle. So the key here is to make sure you don't um, get stuck. There's weird wood lines on Himayama. Sometimes this is even further over to here. Sometimes there's a passage here. Either way, just try to steer wide on it. And he's running to the corner. Sure, sometimes there's sheep there, but he probably could have cut across here. And this was probably would have been more of a split on the sheep. And uh, we do spot his scout here. So we're just gonna go back, but we scouted the rest of this, so we know we can. Uh, we're safe to head back on our side and pick up any sheep that haven't been picked up yet. And we know that these back sheep on my side should be safe. Um, rallying here during Egypt, we send three of the wood. 
a couple, two more on the food, so we're up to seven, and then one more on the gold, and then we're gonna rally villagers onto wood. One of the villagers from the hippodrome, after he builds it, goes and builds the cistern, and then we'll connect these. I uh, do mess up a little bit with my placement of the hippodrome. I do want it to be in front of this so you can have a, uh, a cheap aqueduct connection. And then, um. We're coming back here, dropping off, so. Um. Yeah, after these four are cool, which is plenty of villagers, around villagers onto wood. And we do half build our aqueduct. We're gonna run out, but once this lumber camp comes through, we should be able to afford this. This time our border settlements is coming through at a good time, as well as our exploratories. We also have dialectus on this, so it's speeding up our research speed. And we're trying to find where the second TC is gonna go down. He's collected a lot of stone for this. And we do find the gold that hasn't been touched, so we know this is a stone play, whether it could be a daimyo play, or it could be a 2TC play. And we're up to C2. Four on gold is a little heavy. I probably shouldn't have had so many in gold. I probably could have pulled one of these and gone to wood. So a little bit of a mistake on my part. And over here, we're pulling our guys around the back. We just left because I thought he might try to drop a town center here on this gold and stone. And if I had these horsemen still here, I would have been able to deny this 100%. So really unfortunate timing here. Because uh, we could have done a lot more damage on denying this second TC. Um, and now behind this, we're getting uh, a lot of our upgrades up, which is nice. But we are, um, you know, we're burning down this house here, doing what we can. But we run into this TC and. I, f I thought he was going to build a TC, I just didn't, you know, during my rotation, it was a little bit early and I missed the, missed the TC drop, so a little bit unfortunate. At this time, since we do see the 2TC, um, we've got a window to punish this now. We have messed up, or like he's getting a, TC, a villager advantage, but we are on cistern influence so we currently have 10 percent more villagers so we're actually at 27 and a half villagers of income compared to 26. he doesn't have any eco appetite tech so it's actually a little bit more than that than the two and a half villagers um getting a mill out would be really nice here too in this situation once your range is up well, we, we try to pick this villager and um I think we're able to, right there, which is nice. And we're gonna focus on burning down this farmhouse. He does have a barracks up, and it does look like he's wanting to go from the castle. This is a super greedy play. 2TC and fast castle behind this is very, very greedy. It might be, you know, you might say that maybe this bowl gathering is for to get samurais and just crank out feudal units, and it's a possibility. Um, it just seems like it's a little heavier than you might want. Um, we do try to micro this properly, and we do mess up, unfortunately. We aren't able to snipe another bill here. We only get one more bill. We could have probably gotten two more bills in general. <clears throat> a little bit of a mistake. But behind this, we are trying to mass up archers, so that's really the big, um, the big key, is to get these archers out. This blacksmith is on dialectus, so we are getting our um, research techs up really quickly now, and we are sitting on a ton of gold. So part of this is so we can drop more um, rams, and part of it so we can get more um, production. Again, as the Byzantines, I don't stick to only cav, I play infantry, and as Byzantines, what you're really going to shine is using the spearmen. The Hippodrome is really good to get that first early aggression and get TC denial. Like, if we had done this properly, we would have denied this TC timing a little bit, but we do mess up. But this, this mass enforcement is nice, but it's not going to be really great and feudal in terms of a fight. It's really important that you do transition into 
um, of barracks to really protect your ranged units um, here. And we're saving up um, on wood right now because we want to drop a ram as soon as possible. It is 9 minutes so we do need to start putting some pressure on to this town center. And um, we're just running around trying to find what we can. We see him on these bears here. And we're, uh, we'll if you spear, but. So we're gonna go around back to these bears, see if we can't find villages on here. And we're just uh, producing a lot of spearmen and a lot of archers. And basically our entire ego is mostly on wood right now. We are transitioning to berries, so our food looks like it's bad, but it's just a transition point. And we are feeling a really strong amount of gold. We started re our gold rolls here, stick down just to two because we were really heavy on gold. And while our horsemen had pulled the spearmen back, we're going to push forward here, try to find a timing to hit this um, Japanese player who's almost ready to castle up. And we are able to snipe a couple of bills here. Two, three, four bills, which is really nice. With the TC coming here. And he tries to pull the spearmen, but we're not too worried about this again. We got plenty of archers to deal with this. He needs to put a horse, uh, samurai. But behind this, um, He's going to try to castle, and we're going to get this horseman right in. And, um, yeah, there's a lot of villagers that go down here. Again, most players will react before this, but even just denying this resources is big, but getting, um, what is this, 7 villager kills, 8 villager kills, 9 villager kills, it's enormous. Uh, that's 25% of your eco is just gone like that. So at this point it's basically game over I'd say because you're on 2TC and you just lost a huge portion of your oil of your advantage that you've gotten. But he is um he does switch to he gets his Dino Manor up and he is able to kind of um you know sustain because he is on 2TC. So like all the damage I've done is good damage, but um really good damage but um, I really have to take down the TC and get some 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 killer damage and so here we're uh, rotating to a different wood line getting our blacksmith tax here and um, he's slow tapping up his castle age and we have to fall back because our cure second isn't doing any damage really to this diamond manor and since he has a barracks up we know that we need to focus on killing this barracks um, so we're going to want two, two Kyra Siphons to kind of do this. And we are running around the back with um, horsemen. This is kind of what you have to do with the horsemen. You don't really want to engage them in, in big fights in um, feudal ways. It's just not a great unit to do so, even with Triumph of the Byzantines. Decide to push here. Present this gold. We're gonna burn this house down. Housing is not super important, but it, it's decent to do. We see, you know, he's he's castled up, and we kind of figured that was kind of happening. Um, or if he was, you know, macking to the side here and messing up an army, but since he castled up, that just kind of indicates to us that it's definitely a um, a push to like this is all of his army that he has. So. This uh, this Kyro Siphon on this barracks is actually a really big deal. It's going to be really important because this is the only thing that really is going to be able to produce you in that saddle that's going to be able to counter us and that's going to arms. Uh, you know, Samurai, Castle of Samurai, because you know, the stables are going to be able to, we're going to be able to deal with those uh, mounted Samurai with the Spearman. So um, that's pretty much it for this match. It's just, uh, just uh, an example of something you can do against uh, Japanese. But um, overall, I'm just going to start uploading again and mixing between uh, Mongols and Byzantines. If you guys enjoy it, um, we are on Diamond 3 right now. We lost a lot of matches with the Byzantines, but learning how to play a different style, um, I think overall is going to be really beneficial. And hopefully I can get you guys um, content that's a little bit more relatable in terms of standard play. And I do want to keep playing uh, my Mongol style. Um, 
and uh, finish out the season with a good mix of those two and really be able to gauge the strengths of uh, the new saves. So thanks for watching guys and I'll catch you on the next one.